Welcome. Today we have my good friend Rigoberto, and I just met Rigo at a recent valuetainment conference. He got in the background. I am an entrepreneur. That's the Patrick but David stuff. He's he's rocking it. I love it. I love it. So Rigo, why don't you share with us one thing that most people don't know about you? Well, Ron, listen. Before I get into that, I just have to say I got a glimpse of what you're doing in Cambodia for all these kids. And I have to say, man, absolutely phenomenal. So my hat's off to you. Complete respects to that. And uh, so I just thought I'd get that out of the way, man. I'm really, really great for that. So thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Something somebody, people don't really know about me. Let's see. One thing most people don't know about me is, you know, I'm in business now. But if I wouldn't be doing business, uh, I'd be trying my luck in professional soccer. You know, soccer has been a real big passion of mine. And I have to really decide, you know, do I want to go forward with this or with this? And, you know, I chose the, the most competitive sport of all, right, which is business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Business is a sport. That is right. You know, and then you, you constantly, in the physical aspect, I mean, mentally, everything, strategically, you're still doing the same thing. So uh, we decided to go this route, but soccer has been a passion. Mm -hmm. You know, boxing is, is something I really like, but I, I'd be trying my luck in Portland, which I live in uh, Southern Oregon. So Portland is the Timbers. You know, it's a close spot to us. So I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot with that, but I chose this. So here we are. Wow! Wow! That's that's uh, that's something I never really thought about. So, how else is is sport uh, applied to business? Well, you know, you're constantly having people trying to take you down, right? Which is your competitive, you're competing. <laughs> and, and when you have, let's say, take soccer for instance, you have these plays. You have your coach putting all these plays in. In business, it's the same thing. What's your next innovative campaign, right? Like Patrick mentioned, um, there's so many things you have to deal with and strategize to see. What are you going to do to give yourself the upper hand? And yeah, and similar similar situations, you know, but mostly mentally. Mm. I'm out there sweating. Well, actually, we are here, you know, we're, we're sweating. We're, we're going back and forth. But, uh, you know, you're still having to do a lot of things that you would do in, 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 in any other sport, organized sport. So you're constantly yeah. sweating, so. Mm. Mm. That's right. I like what you said about uh, mentally, right? Because uh, so often it's the mindset is, that is most important. So I guess with that, like, what is your mindset when it comes to business? Well, mindset, you know, there's a saying in the, they go out there in Spanish. It says, para todos hay sol. El sol sale para todos, which means the sun comes up for everybody. You know, it means there's enough to go around for everybody. But even then, you know, you, you got to try your best to, you know, to overcome and, and, make yourself have more of market share, I guess you can say. So you, you still, you don't want to, because if you have that mentality, in my opinion, you'll never get above a certain level. You'll mm -hmm. stay in the same level. Oh, there's enough for everybody. I'm okay with what the life gives me, right? So my mentality is constantly growing, constantly trying to get to the next level. And we mm -hmm. have so many people to try to admire. You have people like Amazon, you know, you have uh, like the Walmarts, you know, these kinds of big companies where if they would have took that same mentality, we would have never heard of them possibly. We would have stayed local. So yeah. I, I, my business mentality is constantly trying to grow. You know, I'm fairly new uh, with my business, but it's constantly trying to grow, trying to grow. What's going to be the next thing? What's going to be the next thing here? And mm -hmm. like I mentioned, we're competing. So uh, it's, you can't just stay stagnant. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. So what kind of business that that you do? So we own a restaurant. So I own a restaurant here in, uh, in Klamath Falls, and we're fairly new. It's been around uh, six months now, actually, and, and we're the highest rated now, thankfully. Uh, we're yeah, great. and you know, uh, we've just been trying to get things going little by little, and implementing all these systems, implementing so many different ways to just give us that upper hand, like I mentioned before. And um, you know, my my business is fairly you know competitive, you know, especially with with the market we have here and in my and specifically in my town. So that's the business that I'm in. The rest of it. But yeah, of course, I like to mention people that any business you're in, you're in the people business. You know, if you're not good with people, you know, might as well shut down. So you have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even when you think about it, nonprofits are competing against one another, right? So yeah. they're always trying to do it. And it doesn't mean that one nonprofit's better than the other. Like everyone's trying to do good, right? Exactly. But, it is. but you're still trying to do better than the other, right? Too. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. So w what is the name of your restaurant again? So the name of our restaurant is Girasol Family Mexican Restaurant in Cantina. And yeah, for those sorry. people who don't know what Girasol means, it means sunflower. Sunflower. So, sunflower, yeah. So gira means to rotate in Spanish. Sol means sun. Uh, you put them together, it means gira. So because sunflowers rotate towards the sun. That's what ah. And you'll find with a lot of uh, Hispanic businesses, uh, they always start with L, this, L, that, or los, this, which means the. Uh, in Mexico, you'll find that a lot of businesses, 
are named after the family who who uh, started the business. So uh, if it's a tortilla place, you know, Tortilleria Ramirez, uh, Refeccioneria Gutierrez, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. uh, shop, whatever it may be, they put their last name. So we just thought we'd keep it clean, simple. Yeah. We do have a mission statement and, and uh, a vision statement here, which is just constantly keep growing. And the sunflower is positivity, it's warmth, it's growth. It's just so many things, and we thought we'd keep it simple, and it sounds nice. So mm -hmm. yeah, it does. It does. So you mentioned that there's there's competition, right? What what kind of competition are you facing? Of course, restaurants always competing. Everyone, but everyone needs to eat. So how do you stand out from the competition? So we stand out because we're a smaller place compared to my competitors, and we try to give more attention to detail. You know, I'll give you a quick example. We if we don't have something specifically they look for a certain dish, a certain drink. I'll run my butt to the corner store and get it back to me if we have to. So we try to go a little bit extra. And and we try to have a different ambiance. We try to get to know our customers. Most places it's come in, eat, hi, goodbye, right? Not here. We try to get to know people. We have a lot of visitors coming from all different parts, from Louisville, from San Francisco, to <clears throat> Washington, Alaska, everywhere. And mm -hmm. we get to know them. And every time they travel, they know they always make us stop here because they get to know us. We end up, you know, our guys end up adding them on Facebook and they make so many connections. Uh, that's what we're about here, and I think we often talk about it's who you know, and when you get to know a person personally from just being a customer, you make a new lead, you get to make a new connection with whatever you're doing, and and I tell these guys really you get to know the people, and and you change your life. You know what it takes one person, so uh, we yeah, try to in that aspect and offering a lot of value. You know, we also with prices benchmarking, right? We use that, but uh, we just provide the most value that we can. You know, in, in mm -hmm. the business aspect and personally as well. Yeah, I like what you said there. It's, all it takes is just one person to, to make a difference. I, I, I truly believe in that. And uh, wow, so within six months, you're already getting customers from all over the world that are coming back and just raving about your business. You're at the top, right? And one of the things that our mentor, Patrick Ben David, talked about is like, when you're at the top, you got to work like twice as hard, right? And Phil Heath talked about this. So maybe why don't you share a little bit like what's, how has your mindset changed from when you first started out six months ago to now that you're at the top? How do you maintain that or even get even better? What's the mindset like? Well, this is, uh, we can say we're at the top and we're high rated, but at the same time, I try to make them and tell you that I'm not at the top because it just keeps me going, right? But you do have to work twice as hard. You twice as hard because this used to be an existing business and people have an expectation. We have to surpass that expectation. A new business in a small town like ours uh, you know, these guys have been around for 18 plus years and you're competing with these guys and you have to know, okay, these guys have their market. They've been around 18 plus years. So what are we going to do to get our fair market share? What are we going to do? So we have to try to keep strategizing and work twice as hard. That means working twice the hours and, and uh, you, know, you can't do it without any help. Uh, you need all the help you can get. So you just have to constantly keep reminding yourself, you can't think that because you're the highest rated business here, that you're going to stay there, you know, that you're going to, Constantly things can change. And with us, we've created an expectation now where we have to keep that and a little bit more. Because if you just leave it, it'll start going down. It'll start going down. And mm -hmm. it's constantly quality control. And, and it's constantly just trying to grow like a mansion. So my mindset yeah. has been that the whole time. So. Yeah. So it also, if I understand correctly, like when you're at the top, like, other businesses or other people that are trying to get to your position, they start copying you, right? Yes. And have you noticed any any of that coming around? Because you're talking about like adding a lot of value, getting to know the customers and all that. Have, have other restaurants adapted to that? Yes, uh, as far as the physical aspect too with, with items, we've noticed that. <laughs> so that's what we're talking. Uh, with having a mission, I think we, we're also letting people know that it's not just what you do or how you do it, it's why. You know, it's really having a why. And, mm -hmm. and it really gets to people to understand, uh, why am I in business? You know, and they start following that same mentality. And I think it's great. You know, if people are mimicking that type of mentality, super great. You know, they, they have a purpose. They have more value for the community. And, and we're great if people can make, mimic us in that aspect. So uh, it's more value for the world, you know, all throughout. So it's, it's great. Yeah. With several uh, uh, local businesses. And I, when I see that online and I'm scrolling through these Facebook feeds to look at the local restaurant reviews and everything else, I find it interesting that, you know, small little things can have a big impact. And, and these people are changing their mindset. You have so many people who own businesses and, and they don't even like to own the business. You know, they just they are there because they have to or, you know, they just thought of an idea. But when you have a purpose behind it, 
You know, there's this big difference. It's a big yeah. difference. When you find them and they maneuver towards that aspect, it's great. It's great for everybody overall. You know, even if it's a competitor, it's great. Mm. So, I, I love the mindset. I love the mindset. And, and you know, just to recap what, what you just said is like having a, a why, having a purpose and having a vision. I think that, that really helps like, and it helps elevate everyone's game. So I like that. So why don't we talk a little bit more about your, your, your plans for the future. I know it's only been six months, but you're already at the top. I mean, and you want to go higher and higher, which is great. Are we, are we going to see your, your restaurants all over the world, all down here in California? <laughs> Listen, I would love to, because I know who my Goliath is. Like we mentioned the all, we know who our main competitors are and we have the Goliath in mind. Now that's always a great thing. And there's a lot of people, I get feedback from customers who say, Hey, don't grow this place. But no, no, no. We want to grow this place, but keep the same, same uh, quality. Right. Uh, yeah. You know, at the vault, we met with a lot of people from Ukraine, from, from uh, uh, what else, uh, Kazakhstan, different places in Germany, Israel. I asked them about Mexican food, and they have no people out there. And they started wow. getting all these contacts and connections. Hey, we need Mexican food over here, and it's not the same. You know, we were in Texas. You think that Mexican food would be the same, but it's more different. <laughs> it's like Tex-Mex or something, right? So, I mean, you have all these connections, and these people don't see any obstacles whatsoever for us to bring our restaurant to those countries, which is so far across the world for us. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, we love to, and we just trying to take it a step at a time, and set these systems in place to where it can run the same way with this small business here. So that's mm -hmm. definitely. You know, it's what's funny is that in Cambodia, I, I, I've been living out in Cambodia for since 2014, and it was so hard to find a really good Mexican spot, right? And recently, it, they they just opened one. It's Bay Area Tacos, so it's like uh, California style tacos. It's really good. It's my friend spot, but you know, there, there are Hispanics, Mexicans living in Cambodia out of, out of all places. So I, I can, I can see like how, you know, you could have places in Ukraine, Dubai and all that stuff too. Exactly. And man, we're everywhere. <laughs> we're everywhere. <laughs> we are people just migrated to so many places. And actually before starting the business, I always had this in mind and I went online and looking up different restaurants all over the world. And I find one here and there in Germany, one here and there, you know, in, in Aust Australia, Austria as well. So mm -hmm. we're, we're everywhere, you know, a small amount, but yeah. it's, it's, it's coming. So, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk a bit about uh, our recent event that we attended, The, the Vault by yeah. Patrick but David. Um, he's the, the founder of Valuetainment. Mm -hmm. And what motivated you to attend this event? Listen, having this business and, and the goals and the ambitions we have for it and for myself and for my people, uh, I just knew I was going to get a ton of value, which, which we did. And, you know, I've been following uh, Value Tamiya since 2014 around there. And, I mean, it changed my life completely, changed my life completely. And, and having the first main event, seeing your mentor in person, a person who, who was, you know, has done what you aspired to do, is just value that you can't compare to anything else. And uh, the information we received from there, uh, just super great, but my motivation was exactly that growing myself. I'm in business now. I'm actually in the market competing What value can I get to give you know give myself another upper hand again? Um, so I was just so motivated just to see a person in, in Living right that I can see that I really mimic, you know, they say find someone that has what you want do what they do and you have what they have Yeah what to do. So uh, being there uh, was absolutely mind-blowing. It was life-changing. I'll tell you just from a couple hours of sitting down you know, we took a lot of notes, <clears throat> completely changed everything that, that we're doing here now. So uh, I just so motivated, inspired, do everything. So uh, we had to do anything we could to get there. And I've been waiting since 2015 when you mentioned that around there to get there. So yeah. we're, we're able to and we're back now. So that's, that's so awesome. So, you know, it's crazy how like technology has advanced so far that it's been like the bridge to connect people, right? Where we have virtual mentors. Right. And, and look at us. We're, we're from different backgrounds, but yet we still have the same mentor. So maybe share a little bit about how, why it's important to have a mentor in the first place. It's super important. Now, everybody's biased and say, my mom is my mentor. My dad is my mentor. They're the best. Right. And, and that's great. My dad is my main mentor, I have to say. But they're always, you've always been around them and they've reached a certain level. But when you find someone that has a connection with you, see, we, I have a connection with my mentors because they're also come from an immigrant background. They, you know, they've struggled through the same things. They speak the same language we do with when it comes to hunger, when it comes to ambitions, when it comes to loss, hitting rock bottom. And you relate to these people 
and then they tell you, hey, I've done this. Let me give you my information so you don't have to go through it the same way. It's super important in saving your steps. I believe Warren Buffett mentions I'd rather learn from other people's failures, right? I'd mm-hmm. rather make their mistakes so I don't have to. So it's super important in getting a shortcut. And I can tell you, just from watching my mentors and seeing what they do, man, I, I save myself so much time, so much trouble. And it's super important because when you feel like giving up, you have these guys that are pushing you. One way or another, it could be virtually, it could be physically. But these people are just pushing you there. It's important to always have a mentor. Uh, like I just said that quote earlier, which I also learned from a mentor. Find someone that has what you want. Do what they do when you have what they have. So yeah. Keep in mind. So mm-hmm. I keep that to myself a lot, and, and I just really try to remember myself. And keep finding different mentors now. You don't want to have different uh, people that just, you know, find. But you do need to have uh, different mindsets that mm-hmm. can give you uh, different, different perspectives. So it's important to always not just mimic one all the way because you have to be yourself. Right. You have to have your own values and know where you stand on several issues. But it's super important to have someone guiding you there. You know, hook your wagon to that star and go ahead yeah. and follow it to, to what you want to do. So it's super important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I think what you just said is, is having different more mentors. That really stood out to me because I, I, I noticed as I got older uh, that my, the need to find different mentors changed, right? Because you're at different stages of your life. Like some of my mentors in the past, now they're getting older or now they're just focused on nonprofit work. And as I transition into entrepreneurship, I find that, hey, I need different mentors. So it's like different levels, right? Yeah. So I, I totally agree with that. And you mentioned how that what, what Warren Buffett said that you want to learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make those mistakes, right? So what is one thing that you can think of that is a mistake that someone else did that you did not do. Okay. Setting up the business, you have to deal with all these stru- structures. And this is the first thing that comes to mind. Um, you have to know and you have to get some information on business structure. So I went around asking several business owners, what, what did you do for your business structure tax-wise? Because if you don't get that right from the beginning, you struggle. And I mean, the IRS here in the U.S. is a big deal, right? <laughs> so I went around asking these business owners, Which, what do you have here? Hey, listen, I have an s score. I have a, I'm a sole member. I wish I would have done this because I, I lost so much money in this, mm. I lost so many in that. So I did my homework. And before starting this, uh, I knew what most restaurants did. And they have different views. So I saved myself the mistake of, you know, going through a sole membership uh, by choosing a different entity. So whether you're going to be a corporation or an escort, uh, LLC, you know, I learned a lot because I saw somebody's failure in that, which caused them to break down and close their business due to one simple choosing of a, ch- of a tax structure. So I learned from that aspect and I knew, okay, I have to do my homework in my taxes and, and I'm going to go this route. So that's one little piece of advice that I, that I got from that. So I learned from their mistake, them mm-hmm. closing down their actual business. For one yeah. little, all you do is write down what entity you'd like. All you did is write something down and it costs you your business, right? Mm-hmm. Well, that's very important and that's one of the main things I took out. Wow. Well, I, I think <laughs> that's a really, really solid tip because, I mean, w- w- with having if you don't have the right foundation to begin with, no matter how big you are, it's going to crumble, right? Yes, yes. Wow. So from this, uh, the, the, the Vault Conference, what were the three big takeaways that you got from the event? Three big takeaways. Listen, <clears throat> one main thing that I, that I was struggling at first with and, and we're still trying to implement a little more is systems. I mean, systems to all businesses are crucial because if you don't have those in place, your people are running around all over the place, you're running around all over the place, things don't flow the same way. That's number one. Second, uh, and we spoke about this a little bit before, uh, just having a purpose, right? I spoke with uh, Patrick's partner, Jose, and he has 25 offices. And, and I said, listen, how did you, how do you keep the quality? How do you maintain? How did you grow? He said, listen, I build leaders. Then I build leaders. And, and I have these guys and I, I focus on them personally. And these guys focus on, on the work. So that's the second thing, having a purpose, right? We went through that with the identity phase at the beginning of the conference. Mm-hmm. Uh, third is just networking. It's just networking, networking. I mean, me and you, here we are, right? And just networking. We get to know a lot of different people from, from uh, Bangladesh, from all, all the places we mentioned already, right? We got to sit at the table and really just network, getting to know people and just going for it. It's, I mean, it's always going to be no unless you ask, right? So those are the main three things I took away, but it just... We had so much content and, and a lot of valuable, valuable information, but uh, you know, in my personal way, that's the that's what I got out of it, you know. And yeah. Just, so. 
So systems, right? Mm -hmm. Systems, leadership development, and networking. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, there's <laughs> there's definitely a lot. Like one of the things that the days, you know, like, well, <laughs> so many things we have is the full packet, right? Uh, but, uh, yeah. Pressure, you know, there's different pressures there are from the CEO to the president to all the way at the bottom. Switching sales force. I mean, there's just so many different things that that uh, we learn from there, and. Mm -hmm. There's so many valuable things we can get, but we, we I mean, I'm, I know me and you can be here all day, so, <laughs> but yeah, there's so many things, but the main takeaway of, of it and everything is the system for me, you know, Systems. I really get home with that one because that's one thing that I really need, need to implement, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree, I agree, that's something that I, I struggle with. <laughs> yeah. I think we all do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's funny. Like for for those of you like 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 me and stuff, if you're struggling with setting up systems, if you're like the visionary, then what Patrick has, has told us is that we need to find people that are great, that love systems, that can help build a systems, and just let them do their thing. <laughs> let them do what they do best. I always be the system guy. So you, and some people try to do everything. You know, at the beginning yeah. of the business, you have to wear all the hats. You do. You, get some help, you know, and and at the conference, I was also able to meet a few other people in my industry and uh, that have the systems in place and it makes my life so much easier you know these guys dedicate their business to, to these systems right mm -hmm. so it's just super great and that's part of networking if i wouldn't have went up to these guys i would have never known and they're in my industry and they do what i'm needing so it's mm -hmm. very important and, and so it's just so many things yeah yeah definitely so um hmm what is what is the biggest misconception that people have about you and what is the reality or the truth about me personally um let's see i'll tell you what there was a misconception and, and it's somewhat a little bit and this happens not just in the hispanic community but i think throughout you know is he never graduated so i'm I let, let everybody know here I went to college for about a year. So we have uh, a program here. We had a program here in, in Oregon uh, called the Advanced Diploma Program, where you get a free year of college, but you get your, your diploma after you get that free year, right? Mm -hmm. you get that free year. And I'm a college dropout. I completed the year, but I dropped out. If this wasn't the route I wanted to take. And the common misconception is you didn't finish school, you're done with it, right? And we get that a lot. You know, people who drop out, is, they're done with it. And, and I still have people asking me, hey, so you never, why don't you go to school? Well, you never done that, even though I have my business, right? But it's just a common misconception uh, that you have to go to school, right? That you have to follow that education. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm mm -hmm. never going to let a doctor that never went to school cut me open, right? But it's, mm -hmm. it's essential. And we're finding that out with so many companies, Google, Amazon, they're not looking for the resume anymore. Yeah, crazy, yeah. right? So that's a common misconception to me is, is he's not doing anything, right? Or maybe he's just struggling with his business now. And he's not... He never finished the schooling. So, and, and so many people get that. I know I'm not the only one, uh, but that's one thing. Uh, I mean, there's a couple others, you know, maybe that, oh, this guy, look at him thinking he's going to be a millionaire. Look at him, he's going to do this and that. Um, or maybe some people thinking he is already there. No, he's just mad. But no, you know, we always have to stay grounded. And you just got to stay level headed and know where you're at. You know, keep your composure at ease with so many situations. And being in business, you know, it's a. Uh, it's a stress. It's stressful, you know. It's not. Uh, he loses like, all his hair. Yeah. <laughs> the hairline going back, right? <laughs> you no, know, it is part of it. But you just love it, you know. And, and whatever people. And one of the things about entrepreneurs is they're shameless, right? You get that they're shameless. They don't. You don't have to think about what other people uh, think about you as well. You don't have mm -hmm. to. You have to do your thing, and you, you just keep doing your own. And then, you know, like like our own mentor says, uh, your success will speak for itself. So they can be yeah. some questions about you. Yeah. You know, they, they don't know the reality. And in the end, your results are what speak. Mm. There's so many misconceptions on these bigger guys, like Bezos, like Gates, like Buffett. So many different things that people think about them. But, you know, who, who, who do people look up to the most, right? So, mm -hmm. very true, important. true, true. And, and just like anyone, right? They all have challenges. They all have stress that they deal with. Just yeah. different levels, different. Uh, I think uh, Patrick talked about this, right? The higher level you are is the higher capacity that you can the higher capacity to, to manage the stress. Exactly. And I think with that is a positive, you know, some people say, oh, stress is bad for you. This is stress is so bad. But, uh, you know, we learned from him that who are the people that are under the stress the most? These pro athletes that we look up to, these people who are really in the game, in the arena, have mm -hmm. so much stress. And then we're the ones that look up to them. So, yeah, it's important to be able to have that 
and higher that pain threshold because it's going to help serve you in life, in, in your personal life. It's going to help you in business and in so many other aspects. So you, you have to be aware of that, that you may be having all this stress, but it's only good for you. you know, it's only good for you. And you don't want to get to the point where you pass out and have a seizure. like right. right <laughs> you want to, you know, and just understand. It's growing. It's growing. It's growing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I guess while we're on this topic about stress, like how, how do you take care of yourself? How do I take care of myself? Well, you know, I'm a big, big gym guy. Uh, now I, I use a little bit of boxing and stay in the boxing just to, you know, release some of that stress in the morning, sometimes afterward. Uh, I would always, you know, I got into bodybuilding with one of my friends here and uh, we've been doing that for a while. Now, when I started the business, it was hard for me and I'm here 24 seven. So in that aspect, I would do the same things. Maybe just take a little walk watch a little bit of video so uh do a few little things just to do that but now it's just the physical mm-hmm. when you're scary, you know and also reading reading is one of the main ones so they have reading there's music and there's reading, uh, uh physical physical mm-hmm. exercise so i try to do a little bit of those things so yeah I yeah I always try to stay uh physically active because it releases the stress all the all the tension you have mm-hmm. uh you know, i think uh nowadays actually even i uh, try to get a massage every now and then and yeah put the bone scratch with the chiropractor yeah. See, see, that's why we get along. <laughs> that's why, yeah. So, cope with it. And, and the problem is a lot of people, once they have a lot of stress, they don't know how to cope with it. They rely on this or smoking or mm-hmm. this here. And, and uh, it's not the healthiest way to do it. You know, there's yeah. ways you can do it. Pick up a book. You know, there's never a problem you're going to have that they haven't wrote a book about. Uh, mm-hmm. Go run, exercise, do a little something. It's going to release all that tension you've been building up throughout the day. And I think it's important. Now, if you look at all the successful people, you know, we got to hear Peter Goober uh, speak. You know, the owner of the uh, Golden State Warriors. Mm-hmm. You saw his routine. He meditates every once in a while. That's a great one as well. Yeah. For 28 minutes, right? 28, 28 minutes. minutes. Like very precise. Exactly. And believe it or not, those types of meditations are super hard to do when it's such a short amount. You have to really, really get into it. And yeah. he also exercises before he does everything else. So, uh, But my three things are, yeah, reading, music, and exercising. So yeah, very important for anybody who was under stress to relieve some tension. Yeah, that I agree. I agree. So oftentimes we, we invest in others, we invest in things that we forget to invest in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, last two, two more questions. Um, what if you could go back to a younger version of yourself, right? What is the one thing that you would tell yourself? If I could tell my younger, I'd tell them to start reading. That's one thing that, that I would would have loved to do for, from an early age is just be ahead of the books that I've just read now. I wish I would have started reading at a, you know, maybe 12 years or younger, you know, with all these business books and all these self-help books that, I, that I've been uh, picking up ever since. But mm-hmm. I wish I would have, I would have told myself, hey, pick up these books. Hey, why don't you wander into the library, see what you can find? Why don't you wander in there, question these things. And, and, and uh, it would have saved me a lot of time. It would have made me more knowledgeable growing up. It would have put me ahead of time whole lot so i would have told myself to start reading early and you know a lot of times it happens because we're in class reading all these fiction books fiction books and you don't get much value from them you think all books are the same it's either a boring lesson or it's a fake story right Goosebumps, yeah some fake uh fairy tale deal and in reality there's so much value out there for you and yeah i would have picked up these these common books read it by you know the thinking grow rich the the hard one friends and influence people these mm-hmm. types of books are the ones i wish i would have picked up at an earlier age it would have pushed me ahead of time so much more so yeah, the things I wish I would have done, and I would have told myself, pick up this book. Yep, yep. I like that. I like that. I like that a lot. And last question: When we go to your restaurant, what is a dish that you recommend for us to get? The one I recommend. Okay, this is uh this is the one, and it's a very traditional dish. Uh, it has a little bit of everything. If you're gonna come to Girasol, I recommend you ask for the morcajete. Now, if you have okay. quite an appetite, it's going to be quite good. Now, that's a, the, the Hispanic version of a mortar and pestle. So it's mm-hmm. going to be a super hot stone, and it has bacon wrapped shrimp. It has a good mm-hmm. sauce on the inside, a steak, mm-hmm. and it has also chicken breast. It has nopal cactus, which I believe in English is uh, the prickly pear. Prickly mm-hmm. pear for cactus. And um, it's just such a delicious. It has queso fresco, which is a part skim milk cheese that mm-hmm. people aren't really familiar with in the United States as much. Uh, only in a more Hispanic restaurant that you don't hear about much. So we have that as well, and that's a common one that you can get. Fills you up, and just a presentation of this thing. Man, I mean, it's like a volcano when it comes out. So, <laughs> I love, I love, I like how you describe it. That's one that I really recommend a lot to people. So uh, yeah, that's one of the things. Just ask for the morcajete. It's a little bit hard to say for some people. Morcajete. Yeah. That's the one. 
Mocha, mo, mocha hite, right? Mocha, yep. mocha hite. All right. So, so with that being said, I mean, what is your advice to other entrepreneurs or restaurantpreneurs that are trying to get started, but is finding that competition is just so fierce that they don't know where to begin? My advice is just to keep staying at it, focus. There's so many ways. A lot of times you want to crash. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you want to crash, but you got to stay focused. Stay focused and keep it going. Although you're going to be having setbacks, keep it going, keep it going. Keep sitting down by yourself and think, strategize. Competition is fierce, but guess what? Competition is fierce in any business room. Mm-hmm. So just keep it, keep it focused. And for anyone who's just starting, uh, focus, focus, focus. Don't go to the club. Focus, <laughs> focus. My main thing is to stay focused and 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 treat yourself here and there very rarely though, yeah. but when you're first starting out so uh if you're already there and you're competing in the marketplace just try to give yourself the upper hand and i'm mm-hmm. that. so uh, i think just staying focused is the main thing because a lot of times you lose the focus and you lose yourself right you lose the focus you you need to keep that momentum that uh, we talked about at the ball right the momentum you build that momentum you keep it rolling. that snowball effect right so yeah uh, for any entrepreneur out there just staying focused because there's a lot of people who own businesses that have several businesses as well but they lose track of time. They lose track of the days. That's happened to myself, right? I ask people, what day is it today? You know, I thought it was just Sunday last night. Oh, no, no. It's Tuesday, right? Yeah. But it's, it's far. So staying focused and, and just staying with that common vision you have is very important. You see that light at the end of the tunnel. Keep it going. Just keep it going. So Yeah. Focus. 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 Focus is the main thing. Exactly. I love it. I love it. All right, Rigo. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Ron, I appreciate your time and thank you for having me here. Uh, great conversation. I'm sure later on we'll see each other again and, and keep it going. I mean, there's so many things we can talk about from finances to business to personal life. I know it's great. We have so much insight and, and yep. I appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy man. You have a, doing Same a lot of great you. things. So <laughs> well, thank you for having me here.